call the meeting to order at uh, Frontier Regional School Committee at 6.01 p.m. And the only thing we have to discuss tonight is the dedication of the volleyball court. And Darius, I don't know if you, you have some history on this, if you want to fill everybody in on that. This Absolutely. Um, so uh, the volleyball parent group, I guess I'll call it, um, approached us uh, midway through last year, me during the volleyball season last year about talking the conversation regarding about um, naming the volleyball court after Sean McDonald, who retired last year. Um, Sean had a amazing um, run as a coach for us for the last 21 years, winning 11 state titles, um, 18 Western Mass championships. Um, and yeah, it really, the reason why we had to do an emergency meeting, just for not emergency, but an unscheduled meeting, um, put one on the calendar is that um, they're really hoping to do the ceremony during the volleyball season and waiting until the uh, September meeting to happen um, really would put a tight squeeze on being able to do the ceremony during a volleyball game. And so uh, Missy and I spoke and we um, put this meeting together um, to do that. It probably could have happened obviously in June. Um, however, between the transition of the athletic director and such, this was kind of um, fell off the, our radar. It should have been there, but it fell off our radar. So that's kind of the reason why we're here tonight discussing this. Um, some background information that the gymnasium is already named um, after by good now and her amazing um, tenure as a coach and teacher um, and community member. Um, and so this is the about naming the court. Um, does this happen everywhere? No, um, it does happen in some places. I, I'll give an example of a, a big one, which I've explained to people like um, Duke University, um, you know, they have a, an arena that's named after, I don't know who, um, but Coach Koshevsky's court, Coach K's court, you know, we named the court after him and his amazing run there. So that's kind of the, you know, we named the track inside the stadium that's um, the Veterans Stadium, sorry, Veterans Stadium, Memorial Stadium, um, here at Frontier, we named the track inside of it. So we have done that in Preston of naming something more individual. Um, and then I just kind of as process, it is the school committee's purview to oversee this. You know, we dealt with uh, one last year or the year before regarding a baseball volunteer. Um, and obviously we did the track dedication prior to that, um, you know, and so forth. So I'll answer any questions that people have regarding the request um, and so forth. I'm just wondering, oh, sorry, am I speaking out of turn? Do I have to be recognized? Okay. Um, so will we put a plaque up, you know, so when people are like walking in, like maybe between the two doors or something, like, is there going to be something designating that so the public knows, or is it just going to be, because it. We would do um, I, the, there's nothing, propo the proposed plan is to oh. do a stencil on the floor, um, stencil the name on the volleyball court. I see a stencil, but eventually it would be painted onto the floor, but you know, for this season, it would have, we've already read on the floor. So um, you would just do the decals are pretty, um, they're pretty good nowadays. Um, and then eventually it would be painted on the floor. If his name, then probably a plaque outside um, indicating um, the naming and why on the court, similar to right now you have the good now gymnasium and there's a, I mean, she has a whole um, trophy case um, yep. in, in, to talk about her accomplishments. Perhaps there'll be some, some kind of setup like that so that there is some understanding why the two are connected. Right. I was just wondering, because then if we have a basketball coach who's fantastic and then they want to name the basketball court after somebody, like they just do like the other side. I just want to make sure we're making it. Okay. We don't know that yet. Okay. All yeah. Well, it's yeah. Uncharted territory. Right. So, you know, let's kind of talk about the, you know, the, it's, this is kind of difficult stuff. It, it, it sounds like it's straightforward and, um, you know, you have this coach who had an amazing run. I mean, right. 11 state championships is not going to be repeated anytime soon in any sport. Um, well, it'll take 11 years. <laughs> um, but uh, but it's also, you know, you have to look at the, um, you know, when you name something, it's it's hard to unname something. And, um, and it becomes, 
it, it, you know, something that, uh, you know, obviously has to be taken seriously. I mean, I'm not saying I was not taking it seriously, but there is that, um, what is the standard, you know, um, we're naming facilities after wins and losses and, you know, dedication to a sport for 21 years. Um, you know, we've had other educators dedicate their entire lives to the community and this, and so forth. You know, it's it's that measure, and I and I know that's I've had these. I'm saying this out loud because I've had these conversations with different members who have called me and or I've ran into and just kind of in conversation. Um, in what is that standard, and how does that standard change from year to year and group to group and committee to committee? That, that's kind of difficult, and then you run into problems. You know, we have some other problems like do, does a named peace ever retire um if you dedicate something does it ever when does it does it ever change over does it you know um it just sound and it, this is not for tonight's thing but it might be something that we want to take on i will give an example um that still you know some members of this committee will remember we have greg blanger memorial um scoreboard for the baseball team it doesn't work and the idea is if we replace that scoreboard, you know, does the memorial of that scoreboard continue? Does, you know, so these are some of those things around naming of things. Um, you know, is there, does it ever transit? If we build a new school, does, you know, that kind of thing, that's far down the road, but those are some of the questions that come up with um, when you start naming things, then, you know, in that kind of thing, if you, you know, so I was just kind of thinking out loud of some of the stuff that was discussed to help inject conversation because it is, you don't do this every day. Um, so questions, thoughts? Can can you remind me, we had a vote maybe a year or two ago Which one? On, for baseball? Yep. So baseball a few years ago, there was a volunteer who volunteered with the team for, um, I forget how many years, it's fifth, I, I did not know him well, so 15, 20 years he had passed and they wanted to do a memorial plaque inside the dugout. And we said that, um, you know, memorial plaques and that kind of thing, in this particular instance, maybe it'd be better to do a scholarship um, to recognize that person's service rather than the naming of a, either name, it wasn't the naming of a dugout, but to do a memorial piece on, on our grounds. And it is, uh, your our policy does talk about that in in practice is that you really shouldn't do a lot of memorials on the school grounds it's a place an institution of learning not a place of memorial um so i mean we kind of talked about that a little bit there you know um so this is not a memorial because sean is um, <coughs> um <laughs> Alive he's and well, healthy and well, as far as I know, and he's probably got, um, you know, you know, he's somewhat young. We would say when you talk about court dedication and, and such. Keith has his hand up and bottom. Keith can go first. Yeah, go ahead, Keith. Yeah, I'm just going back to the baseball. Um, it was difficult. We had to deny that person the plaque. We followed the school policy and we recommended that at their team banquet that they name an award in the, the person's honor or they, or they give a scholarship in that person's honor and i would suggest that we just follow that same policy it seems fairly simple to me that it should be within the team rather than naming something there are a lot of people who've dedicated their lives and their names aren't on anything that we, you know if the volleyball team wants to within their own organization create an award in that coach's honor i would suggest that that's the way that we should go Bob, go ahead. Well, you know, I didn't go to many volleyball games, but the hype around Frontier from Sean being a great coach and having some great players, you know, I think it's just fitting that a volleyball court, you know, in his honor should be named. I just I just feel as though that he's, he's put – I mean, I know other people have given their sweat and soul to – teaching or coaching or whatever but his record i just like vise it it speaks for itself as far as i'm concerned i don't want to speak against john because i think he did amazing amazing things um but i think 
the difference between he and Thai was Thai was a gym teacher. Like she was a someone who worked at the school for all of those years. And that was done before us. I wasn't even thinking about this until you guys brought it up. But I think, you know, if we've had two things come before us similarly and we decide, which is all right, differently, we need to be able to really back that up in a, in a way, you know what I mean? Or support our decision or, you know what I mean? I, I think if our policy was to follow the school policy with Rich Walton, then I think that um, that maybe we need to do the same thing or or maybe not have it permanently on the floor and have it be something else or turn it back to them like we did with Rich. I don't really know. Um, that was kind of my thought when I first heard this too, is just about consistency and enforcing policy or I don't know, enforcing, but in consistency and following our own policy. Um, and and be, yeah, being able to back that up if we're gonna change course, not to diminish anybody's contribution, but I guess that was my, my initial thought too. Does anybody know off the top of their head how long this policy has been in place? I can look that up as we do it. It's been, I think it's been for a long time. You know what I mean? I, and I can post it in the, I'll pull it up. Because I, I mean, in my time, we named the media center after John Frigard, who was a math teacher. We've done Jack Zabeck. We've done Tom Valentin. We've done Vi Goodno. We've done Bob Smith and Walter Flynn on the track. And the policy was in place when we did all of those. Maybe not John Frigard. That's a long time ago. But all the rest of it. Bill, were they all teachers at Frontier? John Frigard was a math teacher. All those people, yes. They okay. taught. We got phys ed teachers and we got, uh, right. Walter, I don't know what course what Walter Flynn taught. My brother was an he English teacher. He was an teacher. English teacher. Yeah. yeah. He so uh, they, yes, they were all full-time <laughs> teachers, employees at the school. Okay. But back then also, we required that of our faculty. It was in the contract. We wanted we wanted our coaches to be teachers. But eventually, there were no teachers available to do the coaching anymore. So that's when we started. In, since I've been here, we started moving outside the building to get our coaches. When I was in high school, when I went there and then when I was first on the committee, all of our coaches were the phys ed teachers. Butch Farrick was a chemistry teacher and he was a football coach. Uh, you know, there were all of the coaching staff, but, and also we didn't have the same number of sports either back right. then that we had. Right. So, yeah, but yes, to answer your question, they were all teachers. Damien. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think that, that was what I, I guess my question I was going to ask is, is, um, and, and and it's not really a policy, but it does seem like there's a difference with the names that we've done. Um, they've been teachers and they've done more for the community and the school than just coaching. And, you know, when when are we going to when and where should we draw the line between naming something? Um, since I've been on the committee, you know, we've done the track and we've done and then the baseball issue was brought up, which we declined. We accepted the track. We declined the, but I, I guess in my view, there was a big difference in those two um, naming issues as, as this one. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I feel on this one. It, it, I, I, I go back and forth. Um, I, 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 I think I have more of an issue with the long-term you know, the long-term effects and, and I forgot who said it, you know, what if 10 years from now we have a great basketball coach, are we going to name half the court a basketball, you know, after that coach? And then I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel on it. I think that Olivia's point is kind of scratches at the issue that, it's sort of since education truly is our mission for all of us, all of those people had a profound impact on students' lives because they were all teachers. They dealt with those kids every day, not just 
after school at practice and at games. You know, I'm not I'm not in any way trying to diminish what Sean has accomplished. That that that's phenomenal. No, Eleven state championships, eighteen Western Mass championships in his tenure. That's great. But is that what the awarding of something like this, naming something after, is that what it's all about, or is it what what you did to help make students complete? And I guess when I, I mean, when I think about this, and this kind of goes beyond the scope of what we necessarily need to take care of on this, on this call, but, uh, or on this meeting, but is it's clear there's a, um, a want or a need from the community to recognize people have had an influence and how do we create a space to give them that? Is there something that we can do that, you know, does encourage folks to support projects with, you know, I think I talked with you about this, Darius, like bricks that you want to have in people's honor or something like that, that gives people a space to have that ability to, to honor people without this, um, you know, being this kind of funny space that we've gotten into with this policy, or do we, you know, bag the policy altogether and kind of say, go ahead, do whatever. Keith? Yeah, I, I was a high school and college athlete, and it was really simple that our team had awards named after people. And it's just a really simple way to, to do it. So there were multiple awards. We had MVP coaches awards, and, and past awards were named after people. It's a really simple way to do it. Yeah, we did the same. And just to jump on what Missy was saying, her and I were having a conversation regarding, I had some thoughts about creating a field house and doing something for alumni and honoring different people um, within the community within it. But that's a long way off and should not be, I'm only mentioning because we've had that conversation. So we have some great ideas about doing more about looking at alumni and community and recognizing people and that kind of stuff. Um, but um, that should not be part of this, this shouldn't be part of the decision. I'm only saying because Missy we just mentioned it, but we have this, a great idea that we want to try to do more with that. Um, but that might be years away and it shouldn't be in place of, it shouldn't affect the decision here, if, if that makes sense. But um, because I do see a lot of other people who have done things and even athletes who have made, who've made um, amazing accomplishments as athletes, you know, we've had, Athletes break state records, get full Division One scholarships, you know, and do all these other things. And some are recognized and some are not, depending on um, it's just in they're recognized differently. And so something we have to work on. You know, I think it's a it's a good problem to have, I guess, in the sense of right. And we have great people. <clears throat> and am I right that is this clip that you uh, added into the chat? Does this mean that this has been a policy since 2016? So that's when the last time, that was when it was first introduced from MASC. You could have had a policy prior to that. Okay. It's just kind of like it was last reviewed there, depending on who edited it and how it was uploaded. But um, that was the source of it. You know, you also have something about memorials to not confuse the two. Um, you know, in within the memorials, it says, you know, this is not a memorial situation. Um, if permanent memorials within schools should, should ordinarily take the form of um, award scholarships unless authorized by a school com committee to do the contrary. So that's kind of what we talked about. Um, you know, we talked about Rich Walton before, sorry, I forgot his name before. Um, but we said, you know, that's really, you're going the other route. So there is two different policies. One's about memorials and one's about naming new facilities. I posted the name facilities one. Um, I had to do multiple ones in order to get it all in so people could easily read it. <clears throat> I make a motion we move the question. Yeah, second. I don't think we have a motion to move. I have a question. Oh, sorry, you may, I'm, I'm, I'm misunderstood. 
Moving a question is bringing something to a vote. We don't have a question at this point because okay. there's right. been no motion. I make a motion to accept Sean McDonald uh, as the court. Whatever way you want to write it. <laughs> I couldn't so you're think of the right word. Right. So you're saying you're moving to move to motion to dedicate the uh, volleyball court in the name of Sean McDonald, former. Um, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Do we have a second? I I'll second for discussion purposes. Yep. Yeah. Right. Any further discussion? We'll do a roll call vote. Um, let me do this in the list of people it's easier to keep track of. Olivia? No. Bill? No. Bob? Yes. Keith? No. Mary? No. Damien? No. Jessica? Epstein. Chris? Uh, no. And uh, so no for me. I think I got everybody. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All in favor of adjourning this meeting? Wait. Point of order. Uh, yes. Who, who motion to who motion to adjourn? Jessica. 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 Thank you. Welcome.